So maybe we can move now to the uh, scientific part of this uh, webinar. And first, starting with the mechanism of action of the spatter set. Just to briefly remind you, the uh, erythropoiesis, which is, of course, a complex and tightly regulated process that takes place in the bone marrow, uh, where our immature progenitors will commit in the erythroid lineage, proliferate, and differentiate until the, to producing these red cells. And the uh, almost unique cytokine involved in these early stages of erythropoiesis is erythropoietin, or EPO, synthesized by the kidney in response to blood oxygenation. But later stages of this, uh, of this differentiation at the erythroblast level is regulated but by other cytokines. And in particular, the TGF-beta superfamily plays a role there by inhibiting, in fact, this late differentiation. TGF-beta superfamily includes not only TGF-beta, but also activins, BMPs, GDF-11, and it signals, they all signal through receptors that activate the SMAD pathway, SMAD uh, 4 and 6 in particular. And in normal situation, TGF-beta signaling is a kind of break on erythropoiesis and stops the late stages and inhibits this differentiation by inducing the apoptosis and cell cycle arrest in this late stage erythroblast. And it plays a major role in the so-called ineffective erythropoiesis that you know very well that is involved in several diseases, either inherited or acquired, such as beta thalassemia and myelodysplastic syndromes. But of interest today for us in myelofibrosis, it is well known that indeed one key player is TGF-beta-1, which is highly expressed in patients with myelofibrosis and plays an important role in the development of anemia in patients with myelofibrosis. So the spatacept is uh, indeed a kind of trap for all the ligands of the TGF-beta uh, receptor. And it's so-called the family of the activin receptor ligand traps. And by binding all these ligands, it prevents the activation of the SMAD23 pathway and therefore removes this break on late stage of erythropoiesis and allows the erythroblasts to continue their maturation and production of uh, red cells. So as you probably know, Luspatacept has already been approved by the FDA for the treatment of anemia in beta thalassemia, low-risk MDS with ring sideroblast, and MDS-MPN neoplasm with ring sideroblast and thrombocytosis, and has been also recently recommended by the NCCN for MF-associated anemia, preferably in clinical trials. 